In this video, I'm gonna take this monster known as the Roblox Animation Editor and explode it like this. Boom! And I'm gonna explain all the different features of this animation editor in a way where you'll understand it very easily. Let's get started. Whee! All right, so first up, what is the animation editor? It's just a tool that Roblox provides us with to create animations for stuff in our game. We can create stuff like stomping, casting a spell, or an obnoxious death, as you're gonna see pretty soon. So before we can begin animating, we need something called a rig, which is basically like a skeleton or framework for our characters that defines how they can move. You can think of a rig like a puppet with strings, where each string represents a part that can be animated. Arms, legs, head, you name it. So to make a rig, you need this thing called a rig builder. And to find it, you can click on avatar and then you can click on this rig builder right here. So now, depending on how detailed you want your animation to be, you can choose either R6 or R15. R6 is basically the blocky Roblox character, but with less body parts. And R15 is for more realistic games and it contains more joints than R6. So for example, an R15 character has the shoulders, forearms, and hands all separated. R6, however, is kind of weird. Everything from your shoulder to your hands is one object. So if you want to move just your hands in R6, you're going to end up moving everything. So I'm going to be choosing R15 because it gives me more joints to work with. And from here, you can choose what kind of avatar you want to use. I'm just going to click on my avatar and it'll give me this bacon hair. And now we need this thing called the animation editor. And you can find it right underneath avatar. It's right here. You're going to click it. And then you're going to want to select your rig. Just click on it like this. And now it's going to prompt you for an animation. I'm going to call this death. And then you're going to click create. And suddenly, you see all of these windows and you're probably going to be one of two people. Person number one. Oh my god, this looks so cool. There's so much stuff. I wonder if I can impress my math teacher after watching this video because this looks complicated and I can do complicated stuff too. Or person two. Oh my god, what in tarnation is this? It looks so complicated. I'm starting to get dizzy just looking at it. Regardless of what kind of person you are, let's start breaking this thing apart. First up, you see this thing with the numbers? It's called the timeline. If you look at the little thingy underneath the YouTube video where you can skip to different parts of the video, that's literally what this thing is. It just allows you to move across the animation. And you can do so by dragging this blue cursor around. Now you'll notice that no matter how slow or how fast you drag this around, nothing is happening to your character. That's because we haven't added any keyframes. So what is a keyframe? Well, a keyframe is just a specific point in your time in your animation where you define the position, rotation, and other properties of your rig. It's like capturing a snapshot of your character at a particular moment. And when you create a bunch of keyframes and play them back, Roblox will smoothly transition between these points, creating an illusion like it's moving. It's like flipping through a comic book where each keyframe is a new panel, and the story comes to life as you turn the pages. So how do you create a keyframe? Well, first let's take this blue cursor and let's drag it to where we want the keyframe to be. I'm gonna put it right here. This is 0.06 seconds. So now, what do I wanna do at 0.06 seconds? Well, let's say that I wanna take this head and I wanna move it downward. So to do that, I'm just gonna carefully click on the head and then I'm gonna see these rotation handles. I'm gonna take this red one and I'm just gonna drag it and boom. Now it looks like his neck is kinda cracked and that's okay. Now, you're welcome to feel bad for this guy, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this cursor, I'm gonna drag it and watch what happens. As I drag this forward, this is the first frame. So frame by frame, as you can see, his head is trying to look more and more downward. So the first frame, he's looking down a little bit, then he tries to look down more, then he tries to look down more, then he tries to look down more, and then it continues until my last keyframe, which is what I've added. And that right here, this is Roblox trying to smoothly animate your character's head. So basically, this was the keyframe that we created for the head, and this is the original keyframe. So this keyframe right here, it represents a point in time where a character looks like this. And then this keyframe right here represents a point in time where a character looks like this. And Roblox is just smoothly animating it. And now if you want to see what your animation is going to actually look like, you can just click on this play button right here, and then boom. Within 0.06 seconds, your character's head is going to go from a normal looking ahead pose to a I have a broken neck kind of pose. And alternatively, you can just press space on your keyboard. And as you can see, I can press it as many times as I want. And it's just going to automatically press the play button for me and play my animation. Okay, cool. But I want to make my animation longer. So let's say I want this guy's head to be cracked. But I want this head to be cracked at like, instead of 0.06 seconds, I want it cracked at like 0.024 seconds. So I just take this keyframe and drag it. And now if I take this cursor and move it backward and I press play, his head goes down slower. Well, how do you make your animation even longer than that? Well, if you look over here, there's a number one and a number two. This number one right here is called the scrubber time. And this is basically where your keyframe is. So if I move this, as you can see, this number right here changes. 
And the second number right here, this is the maximum length of your animation. And this is one second right here. These zeros are milliseconds. This is not one minute, this is one second. So if I take my keyframe, I can drag it all the way to this one right here. And this whole entire animation will take exactly one second to play. Okay, so how do you actually make it longer? Well, if this is the maximum length, I can just change this number. So instead of one second, if I wanna make it five seconds, I can just press five and then enter. And there you go, the animation has changed a little bit. I can take this keyframe, I can move it all the way to five. And there you go, he's slowly breaking his neck and it's gonna take approximately five seconds. A crack, there you go. <laughs> okay, so now you're probably feeling a little bit bad for this guy. I mean, we've broken his neck a couple times and I don't think this is a healthy posture. So what if you wanna move this guy's head but you don't want it to go like 90 degrees? So to do that, what you would do is you'd go over here underneath avatar, you'll see this rotate. And this is how many degrees that a twist of this would move. So this right here is 90 degrees. And if I change this 90 right here, I can change it to like one and this will allow for more accuracy. So I can change this just like that. And now you'll see it's not snapping to 90 degrees. And now that he's in this position, if I go back and I press play, as you can see, he's not going to completely break his neck. He's just going to look down. There you go. Okay, perfect, perfect. So what else can we do with this thing? Let's take this keyframe, move it backward, and I'm just gonna change the time back to one second. Perfect, so I want this guy to slowly die. So what I can do is I'm just gonna delete this keyframe. I'm gonna right click it and click on delete. And now the keyframe is gone, he's not doing anything. Okay, so instead of rotating this guy's head, what if I want it to actually move? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this cursor and I'm gonna move it somewhere, let's say six at 0 0.06 seconds. And then instead of these rotation handles, I want it to actually move. So what I'm gonna press, I'm gonna press R on my keyboard. And as you can see, those things turn into arrows. And now what I can do is I can take this guy's head and I can just move it and decapitate him and slowly, uh, sure. <laughs> and now watch as his head shoots away from me. Pew! <laughs> Now, if I want this thing to loop, I can press this button right here. This is the looping animation toggle. I can click it. And then if I press space, suddenly he is zooming out and is just going to be continuous. Okay, so I've decided that's a little bit too fast for me. So I'm going to take this keyframe. I'm just going to extend it all the way to about 0 0.27. And now if I press space, whee, he's gone. I'm going to take this cursor, move it all the way back. And I'm going to press space. And as you can see, his head is now zooming. Whee, whee. All right, so now if you feel bad for the guy, you can take this animation and delete it. And once again, if you want some fine control over movement, you better change this to 0.01 because this is gonna give you some really fine control. Otherwise, it might be set to one. And if that's the case, then if you take something and you try to move it, it's not gonna give you much fine control. But if you change this to a 0.01, then you'll see you have some much better control. Okay, okay, I just realized I turned this thing into a centaur. And if you want some fine control, you can click on this arrow and then you can change this number right here to like 10 and suddenly his head goes backward 10 studs and that has the same effect as clicking on his head, pressing R and then taking this arrow and trying to move it 10 studs backward manually. So now let's talk about easing style. This is a little bit more complicated, but this will make your animations really, really nice. So what is easing style? So easing style is basically like what kind of formula that Roblox uses to calculate your animations. So for example, if I take this guy's head, or no, let's, let's spare the head. If I take this guy's torso and I move it like this, and then if I go backward and I press play, as you can see, he's moving at the same speed. So if I go frame by frame, as you can see, it's all the same speed. And this is because we're using a linear easing style. Now, what if I want to change this easing style so the animation starts off slow, but then ends fast? What I would do is I'd right click this keyframe, hover over easing style, and then click on cubic. And then I would take these keyframes, right click, easing style, cubic. And as you can see, these now have turned yellow. And now if I show you this frame by frame, watch this, move it one frame, you can see it barely moved, right? Barely. And then if I move it the next frame, it's starting to move, starting to move. Now it's getting faster, 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 faster. And if you play this, it looks like that. It looks like he's kind of falling. Whee! Now, if you want to have some fun with this, click on the keyframe, right click it, easing style, change it to bounce. And then you can do the same thing with this one. Easing style bounce, go here, easing style, and it's set to bounce. So now, if you click play, <laughs> he's like, he must be breaking a couple joints trying to look down. Now let's talk easing direction. Easing direction in animations is basically all about the way how your animation transitions between different keyframes. Think of it like a runner in a race. Just like a runner can start slow and speed up, 
or start fast and slow down, animations can do the same thing between keyframes. So in Roblox, there's three different types of easing directions. There's in, which is like a runner is starting off slow and then picking up speed. In animation, this basically means the change starts slowly and then accelerates towards the next keyframe. In these easing directions, they help us make animations look more natural and less robotic. It's like adding a touch of real life physics to your character's movements, making it speed up or slow down just like we do in the real world. All right, so I've reset the easing style back to cubic. So if I take this cursor and I start to move it, as you can see the first frame, nothing happens. And then it just slowly starts to go down. And then as we get closer and closer to the last keyframe, it gets faster and faster. So if I play this, it looks like that. And now I can change the easing direction by right clicking, easing direction, change it to out. Then I'll do the same with this one, easing direction, out. So now that the easing direction is set to out, it's doing the opposite of what it did before. So if I take this cursor and I move it, as you can see, he's already trying to reach his goal. And then as he gets closer and closer, he gets slower and slower. And altogether, it looks like this. And if you want to see this easing direction thing in a little bit more detail, I change this lifetime to five. And then I'll take this keyframe, move it here. And now watch carefully. As you can see, he gets slower and slower and slower and slower. And once again, I can right click this, change the easing direction to in. And now it will be the opposite of what you basically just saw. So now instead of going slower and slower, he should go faster and faster. Slowly. Too fast. So my tip for you is to use this whole easing direction and easing style thing to make your animations look better and better. All right, and there you have it. So if I press space, boom, boom. If you've been learning pretty well so far and you want to learn more about scripting in a clear way where each line of code is explained to you, then this book is literally made for you, The Beginner's Guide to Roblox Scripting. This book will teach you Roblox scripting from the very beginning and by the end, you'll know so much that you'll be able to create your own admin commands and understand all of the code in it. If you're interested, there's a link in the description of this video or you can go on Twitter and look for my pinned post. If you buy the physical copy and send me a picture on Twitter within 6 months of this video being uploaded, I will give you a surprise. And now that we have our animation, how do you put it in Roblox? So as you can see, this animation is 1 second and 0 0.09 seconds long. But this entire animation is 5 seconds long and I don't like that. So I'm just going to change this number to 109 and that's just going to make this whole entire animation just 1 second and 0 0.09th of a second long. And now I'm going to press space to see my animation again because I like it so much. Bam, bam. So now what you're going to do is you're going to press these three dots right here. Then you're going to press publish to Roblox. And this will allow you to publish your animation to Roblox. I'm going to call this dramatic death. I'm just going to make the description for YouTube. And if you want this animation to be uploaded under a group, you can press this, then click on your group. But I'm just going to make it under me. And then I'm going to press submit. And boom, there's my animation. And this is important right here. Press this button right here. This will copy your ID. Then press close. I'm just going to put my ID right here. I'm just going to paste it. And there's my ID. And now I'm going to extend this tutorial to beyond the animation editor and I'm going to actually teach you how to put this thing in your game. Because what good is an animation if you can't put it in your game, right? So now that you have your animation stuff, you can close out of the animation editor and then go to starter pack, right click, insert object, and local script and let's start coding. Now I promise this is not going to be a long script. This is going to be very easy. Watch. Just get rid of this print hello world. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the player. So we're going to say local player equals game dot players dot local player. Now we're going to say local animation equals instance instance dot new animation animation dot animation ID is equal to just type this in rbx asset ID colon slash slash then you can put your ID right here. This is basically telling Roblox this is the animation that I want. And now we got to attach to the player. So what we're going to do is we're going to say local anim equals player dot character dot humanoid dot animator load animation and we're going to load the actual animation just like that and the last thing left to do is play the animation which is this line of code right here this just plays the animation and this wait five right here is basically just saying wait five seconds before you play the animation so now if i play my game as you can see five seconds later the animation will play however there's going to be one problem as you can see he falls down but then he's not completely falling 
Now, why is that? To figure that out, we're going to go back into our animation editor. We're going to go to avatar animation editor. And as you can see, in my animation, he's actually falling down to the ground. Why didn't he fall down to the ground when I actually coded it and put it in my game? So the reason it did that is because another animation that was playing in our character overrode the animation that we just made. It's like our character was being idle and just breathing and looking around. And then we told Roblox to play our animation. Roblox didn't know whether to play the idle or our animation. So to fix that, we need to tell Roblox, I want you to prioritize my animation. And to do that, you're going to click on these three dots, hover over set animation priority. As you can see, it's set to core, which is a low priority. So what we want to do is we want to make this a higher priority. So we can set it to like movement. And since movement is higher than idle, it will override the idle animation. So now what we can do is we can right click these three dots, publish to Roblox again. We're going to override an existing asset. We're going to click on the asset that we had, dramatic death, submit. And now we don't even have to change the ID because it's the same one. Close out and now player game. And as you can see, the animation should work. So here I am and some seconds later, start falling down. There he is. Okay, so that's cool and all, one bug got fixed, but how do you get your character to stay on the ground? How do you get it to stay on the floor after he's dead? So to fix that, we're going to go back to the animation editor. Now, as you can see, I set the length to 15 seconds, but even though I did that, it's not going to change anything because if I press play, as you can see, it's not, it's stopping right over here at the last keyframe. So we have to be smart about this. And what we have to do is we have to take this last keyframe like that, right click, copy selected, and then take your cursor, drag it all the way to the end like right over here, and we'll take that same exact keyframe and paste it. Now, our animation will last longer. As you can see, it's gonna last all the way, all the way until the 15 second mark. Now, let me explain how this works. So remember, when we have one keyframe and then another keyframe, Roblox tries to animate between it. However, if the two keyframes are the same, like this one and this one, there's nothing to animate because nothing changed, right? So that's how you can get your animation to persist through the last keyframe. I'm just going to right click this, publish it back into Roblox, and then I'm just going to overwrite it, dramatic death, submit. And now our character should lie on the floor as it's dead. So here we are. And now a couple seconds later, oof, right? There you go. He's dead. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.